I'm Dave Champion. For months now, I've been doing videos on SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19. I'm going to shift gears today and do something considerably different. For those who are unaware, I'm the author of Body Science, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about some of the questions that I've been getting from people. And the question that I really want to address today that I've been asked repeatedly for some reason over the last handful of weeks, just again and again and again, the same question. If you're living in ketosis and your LDL numbers are skyrocketing, should you be concerned? So first of all, obligatory comment, I am not a medical doctor, so if you want to tune out right now, go ahead. However, on the flip side, you can just get a copy of Body Science, read all the data and science for yourself and make up your own mind. So the question is, if somebody is living in ketosis and their LDL cholesterol really increases, are they at risk of heart disease or myocardial infarction or anything negative from that? Before I can answer the question, I have to lay a little bit of foundation for you. So I've talked about living in ketosis. And for those who are unfamiliar, there are only two ways that the body can fuel the cells because your energy comes from the mitochondria and the one trillion, approximately one trillion cells in your body. So you have to feed an energy source, just like you put gas in the car. You have to feed an energy source to all trillion of those cells. And there are only two forms in the entire world to do that. One is ketosis. We'll talk about that in a second. The other is what, in body science, I dubbed glucosis. Now, I had to give it a name because in all of the history of medical science, even though there's only two, just like the northern and some of the southern hemisphere, science, 120 years ago, gave ketosis a name and left the other half, the other hemisphere, unnamed. So in body science, I named it glucosis. In ketosis, all of those cells that we just talked about are fueled predominantly, overwhelmingly, by two substances, triglycerides and ketone bodies. In glucosis, which is probably how 99.9% .9 of the world lives today in modern agricultural society, um, their cells, the predominant amount of energy created in their cells is from blood glucose, more commonly known as blood sugar. So for the purpose of moving forward, if you're in glucosis, your body's primary fuel source is glucose, blood sugar. If you're in ketosis, your body's primary source of cellular energy is ketone bodies and triglycerides. So people don't get the wrong idea. Brief comment about body science before I get rolling. It does not address any diet. It doesn't address the keto diet or carnivore diet or the paleo diet. It's not a diet book. It doesn't address any of those things. What it does address is the physiological distinctions between glucosis and ketosis, which are, those distinctions are critical for our health. In other words, it's a physiology book. I do throw in some history and some of these shenanigans pulled by the government over the last 60 years, but predominantly it's a book on physiology. When people ask me about high cholesterol, first question I ask them is, are you living in glucosis or ketosis? If they're living in glucosis, I don't have anything to say to them. And the reason is, in my opinion, and you can judge for yourself, in my opinion, living in glucosis is unnatural and unhealthy. And if you think that's a really weird statement, yeah, this will straighten that out and you'll understand exactly why I say that. Conversely, if somebody says to me, I want to talk about high LDL numbers and I'm living in ketosis, okay, now we can have a conversation because that person is living the way the body is genetically coded. That person is living in the healthiest possible condition using the correct fuel sources. And now we can talk about these numbers w without having the sort of poisonous, unhealthy influence of glucosis which is how the medical community has seen LDL and HDL and remnant cholesterol, have seen all those factors. They've always seen them within the poisonous environment of glucosis. Um, there is zero research on LDL, HDL, remnant cholesterol, total cholesterol, etc., in terms of ketosis, which is what I'm talking about. So does LDL cholesterol go up in some people when they change the choices they're making in life, so that they are living in ketosis. And I want to stress that phrase a moment, because I've known people who, for instance, they'll get on the keto diet, which 
puts a person into ketosis. They'll get on the keto diet for 60 days because they want to lose weight or, or some minimalistic, narrow perspective like that. And that. That's not who I'm talking about. That's not the environment I'm talking about. I'm talking about living in a state of ketosis. That's how you choose to exist. Okay. Years. Whether we're talking about LDL, HDL, VLDL, IDL, these are all within the, and triglycerides, these are all within the category called lipids. And I say that to make the point that uh, probably the sharpest lipids researcher in the United States and perhaps the world is a gentleman by the name of Dave Feldman. And Dave Feldman came after much research. He saw a pattern and he identified the people who fit this pattern as lean mass hyper responders. What that means is when a person goes into ketosis, a lean mass hyper responders, LDL will rise. Now, we've all been told right for forever that high LDL is bad, but remember that's within the framework over here of glucosis. So is it equally true over here with ketosis? And I'm going to tell you the answer is no. And Dave Feldman confirms that time and time again with his research. While we don't know whether being a lean mass hyper responder is just purely genetic or it's the choices you're making in your life, uh, it seems a high percentage of those people who are lean mass hyper responders in ketosis are athletes. Okay? I, I go to the gym, I do cardio, I lift weights. I've been doing that for 35 years. I am a lean mass hyper responder and my L I've been living in ketosis for years and my LDL cholesterol is high enough that a cardiologist who does not understand the distinction between glucosis and ketosis, he'd have a heart attack looking at my LDL numbers. So am I concerned about my LDL numbers? No, because I understand the science and the research that differentiates glucosis from ketosis. And I understand that when you are in ketosis where you're fueling your mitochondria, fueling your cells correctly. See, because glucosis, it poisons you a little tiny bit more every day for decades, which is why chronic disease strikes people who live in glucosis um, in their late 50s, 60s, 70s, because that's the point where the body says, I'm out. I, I can't cope anymore with, with this constant poisoning. It's been building and building and building and building. A good way to look at it might be if you had a little bit of arsenic with every single meal. And over the years, it just built up and built up and built up and built up until you're sick. Well, it's the same thing with glucosis. Okay, so I'm a lean mass hyper responder with high LDL and I I'm not concerned about that. It's not high. Let me be clear about that. It's not high within the framework of ketosis. It's not high within the framework of being a lean mass hyper responder. It's only high by medical standards looking at people who exist in glucosis. Okay. So I'm not concerned about where my LDL level is at all. There's a couple of reasons for that. The first reason is despite everything you've probably heard for the last 30 or 40 years, uh, cholesterol is actually a heart protective substance. Yeah, I know you've been heard, you've heard your whole life that, that LDL cholesterol, if it's high, that's a marker that you're more inclined to get the chronic disease of heart disease and have heart attacks and that, no. However, if you're living in glucosis and your LDL is high and there are other factors at play, yes, that, that is a risk. Let me share a line with you right out of body science. The idea that the body produces substances that kill itself absent unhealthy influences by the conscious occupant is absurd, right? The body does not kill itself. So if you're in ketosis, which means you're not doing this slowly, 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 slowly poisoning routine of glucose. If you're over here in ketosis, then there's, your body is not going to produce anything that's going to harm you. And it knows the absolute correct level for you. Okay. So I'm over here running my mouth. But how do you prove to yourself, aside from reading body science, how do you prove to yourself that what I'm telling you is factual? Okay, so I mentioned remnant cholesterol a couple times, and let me explain what that is because that's something that doctors typically they have never heard of, um, but you can look it up for yourself online. It's a well-established um, mainstream medical dynamic. If you've had a lipid panel anytime recently and you've got the paperwork or you can look it up on the app on your phone, I'm going to tell you how to determine what your 
remnant cholesterol number is. And here's how you do it. You add your LDL cholesterol with your HDL cholesterol. So you get a total number that's not total cholesterol, but it's the total of those two numbers. You're then going to subtract that total from total cholesterol. Whatever the remaining number is, is your remnant cholesterol. Without getting too much into it here, a layperson's way of viewing this might be after you take a look at those primary forms of cholesterol, this gives you the number of how many other types of cholesterol are running around in your blood. There's a gradient that goes from this is really bad to this is really good. And to keep the video short, I'm not going to go into the full gradient. I will just tell you for the purpose of today, if your remnant cholesterol number is 23 or below, you're good to go. If your remnant cholesterol number is 24 or above, uh, we're starting to get into a problem. So now let me bring that back around to living in ketosis with high LDL. The vast majority of people who are in ketosis and who are lean mass hyperresponders have a remnant cholesterol number well under 23. And being over that for people in ketosis, even when their LDL is astronomical, being 23 or above, it's virtually unheard of. In one of his videos, Dave Feldman tells a story about one of the people that he's been working with. And the guy's cholesterol, he's, he's a lean mass hyperresponder in ketosis. And his LDL cholesterol, somewhere up in the threes, I forget, which, you know, of course, again, a cardiologist would, would faint and pass out. Okay. And yet, his remnant cholesterol number is 13. Okay, so that gives you some idea of how incredibly healthy in terms of lipids people are when they live in ketosis and they take their remnant cholesterol. In this case, he happens to be a lean mass hyperresponder. Remember I mentioned HDL cholesterol a few moments ago? Well, HDL cholesterol is pitched as the good cholesterol. By the way, all cholesterol has a purpose. There's no such thing as good or bad. Um, nevertheless, it's pitched to the public as the good cholesterol. And certainly you want HDL to be as high as it can be. So do you want to know what really ratchets up HDL? Yeah, living in ketosis. Here's an interesting fact. If a person has high HDL, the good cholesterol, low triglycerides, and very high LDL, do you know how much evidence exists that that profile tends to create heart disease or heart attack? Yeah, the evidence for that is zero. And why would the evidence be zero after decades and decades and billions and billions of dollars of research? Because that profile does not create heart disease. And that's exactly the profile most people have in ketosis. Remember in body science, I said I talk a little bit about government shenanigans. I wanted to share with you, and you'll, you'll find this in far more detail in the book, that the government has a virtual blackout on any funding where the government would substantiate any of the things we've talked about here today. Now, there's plenty of substantiation from private researchers such as Dave Feldman, but the government, in order to research something, somebody has to write a check, right? Well, the, there's a blackout from the federal government. If you say, hey, let's take a look at this ketosis-driven uh, paradigm. Sorry, we don't have any money for that. Okay, they're trying to keep all of these kinds of things I've shared with you today, they're trying to keep them from becoming a part of the official narrative. Because if the government funded these studies and it showed the kind of things I'm sharing with you today, then it would be a matter of public record and people would know and that would be incredibly injurious to multi-trillion dollar industries. I know I threw a lot at you more than just the question of uh, high LDL cholesterol within the construct of ketosis. Uh, but I hope it gives you kind of a framework to better understand what's really going on. And of course, if you want to know the full picture in all the details, but laid out super easy. So that's what you're going to find here in Body Science. If this has piqued your interest and you would like to live a healthy life, and by that I don't mean the kind of stuff like, you know, you, you see on the internet, where, you know, you see the guy jogging, you know, it's a healthy lifestyle. That's not what I'm talking about. This is much more fundamental. This is the core, genetically coded physiology of your body. And if you live your life so that your actions and the genetic coding of your body 
are in lockstep, you're going to be incredibly healthy. So we'll see. Is that you? It's not most people. Let's find out if it's you.